Take the engine out, put a battery in. You don't even have to switch the platform. Save the money, just install the EV architecture and keep the production line as similar as possible. Let's pick one vehicle from every company that would be better as an EV. It's a conjecture adventure. No horsing around, straight to it. Oh, and I, I need your help from some of these. Stick around to the end. Acura MDX. This is a family hauler. A to B. Three rows of upscale boring. It's underpowered already, and it doesn't really compete with luxury brands anyway. Put a battery in it and a couple motors, and it becomes what it could be. Competitive. Cancel the gas version Type S and just make that the electric one for about $80,000. The Alfa Romeo Tonale is an upcoming vehicle, and it's supposed to be a plug-in hybrid. Just make it an EV with a little bit bigger battery. Moving on. The Audi A3 has 201 horsepower and a 0 to 60 in 6.3 seconds. Just do that with electric architecture. It's easy. If this came in under 45K in the US, it would be hotcakes. Even with only 200 miles of range and 50 kilowatt charging. You'll see a theme arise here. We need cheap EVs. For every $5,000 you lower the price of a car, it doubles the amount of people that can afford it. And we have to find a way to make these vehicles affordable. That's why you keep the same architecture. I know some of this speculation might not make sense, but we want every brand to offer a profitable EV that people can buy and will cost the consumer and the car company the least amount of money. You Using as much existing tech as possible, and that's the thought process for each of these vehicles. And for brands already doing this, something fun and appealing is what I went for. The BMW X1 would crush as an EV. $38,600 base price? Let's say the EV's $49,000 loaded. An entry-level BMW EV for $49,000. 0 to 60 can stay 6.3. Just leave it there with a tiny little motor. Heck, even offer a front wheel drive, 200 mile range and 50 kilowatts once again, and you wouldn't be able to make enough. The Buick Encore starts at $26,100. Let's say the EV version starts at 30K, no, 29,995. The zero to 60 on the gas car is like nine seconds. So leave it there and use a tiny cheap motor. Give it a 150 mile range. Make it front wheel drive only. And since it's a small battery, it'll only need 50 kilowatt charging to charge fast enough. And it would make Buick a sales leader overnight. Go the other way with Cadillac. Put the Hummer EV battery pack somewhere in the Escalade. Use the ESV body only, that's the big one, and take out the third row option. And charge the amount you would for a top tier Escalade with all the fixins. 200 miles of range, 190 kilowatt charging on the Altium platform, and let's say $140,000. A California soccer model dream. For Chevy, they've already got some EVs coming and they already offer the Bolt. I say make a Chevy Trax Sport Pack. There's a trim. $27,995 and take out the back seats. Use the same motor you put in the Encore EV. What makes it a Sport? Oh, I don't know. Maybe rear wheel drive and the fact that it only has two seats. That's enough for today, isn't it? Maybe throw in some 19 inch wheels. That would probably make the range about 140 miles instead of the 150 that you'd get from the Encore. And market it to teenagers. Take away the CCS. Just make it a 1772 AC plug. And it would be the king of every high school parking lot. And you'd buy it because it's $27,995. Plus, it probably gets some part of that tax credit. Chrysler to me is a lost cause, so just make that Pacifica plug-in hybrid a full EV, try for 200 miles of range, maybe 220, and just call it a day. Charge the same $59,000 or whatever you're charging, because anyone looking at a Chrysler is obviously not shopping around. Dodge is easy. The upcoming Hornet is already a plug-in hybrid. Just make it electric. I don't know how much it's gonna cost. Neither does Dodge. Fiat made a 500E and then they quit. That was dumb. Bring it back, plain and simple. This is actually happening. It looks like the unveil is tomorrow. Ford is hard because they are already building EVs and the Mustang Mach-E, regardless of what you wanna think about the Mustang name, is a very competitive midsize SUV. But I say bring back the Explorer Sport. Two-door, rear-wheel drive, use one of the Mach-E GT motors, 200 miles of range, shoot for four and a half seconds to 60, and make it $60,000 before options. Only do a four-door version of this exact same platform for the cops. That's my kind of police interceptor. For Genesis, the G80 looks good. No notes. GMC, gotta be the canyon. Do all the AT4X stuff. One motor for each wheel. 800 pound-feet, 
35s and a lift kit. Call it the GMC Canyon Crawler. And it can start at 75k. If you build it, they will come. For Honda, I nailed this one down in my last video. You can watch it here. They need to bring back the element. All-wheel drive, lots of torque. Who cares about horsepower and top speed? Or 0 to 60. It doesn't matter. It's an element. And it's so different, it won't cannibalize any of the gas engine stuff that's just going to die very slowly anyway. Make the new element $55,000. Go retro with it. Make it look like the old one and get all those adventure people back before Rivian takes them all to brand loyalty. For Hyundai, if you don't want to kill off the Veloster N, bring back the Tiburon. Make it a throwback. And the EV is the only trim. The Tiburon TB. Use as much of the 1996 body style stuff that you can. And so you don't hurt the Veloster sales, make it a puny little car, power-wise. Give it one of the Ionic EV motors, but use the battery packs from the Ionic 5 so it'll have real fast charging. That way you don't have to give it any more than like a hundred miles of range. Charge $27,499 and make the two-door version the only configuration available. That's the only way to keep it from being the best seller in the entire Hyundai lineup. Infinity has to do a performance version of the Q60. 50-50 weight distribution, 0 to 60 in 4 seconds, 200 miles of range. Give it two Aria motors. You could charge $60,000 or maybe $65,000 and call it the Q60 Horizon and put me down for a red one. Jaguar needs to update the I-Pace. I feel like even in a fantasy world full of conjecture that this video is, Jaguar would not negotiate with me. So just make a newer I-Pace, will ya? Maybe switch to CATL for the batteries. Jeep is almost there. The Wrangler 4XE, just make that full electric. Just put more batteries in it, right where the engine used to be. All set. 70 grand. Kia should do a Rio 5-door with one EV6 motor. The branding is already there. 110 miles of range, 4.5 to 6. The Rio GT, $35,000. Justify the price with big wheels and fast charging. How about a Land Rover Discovery Sport Touring? Rear-wheel drive, 200 horsepower, 200 miles of range. You can charge $60,000. It is a Range Rover. You've got all the hardware from the I-Pace. Lexus has already built an EV based on the BZ4X and the Solterra. I can't ask them to do any more than that. Lincoln can just copy Cadillac and do a Navigator EV. Give it all the stuff, use the long version, omit the third row, and charge an absurd amount of money. Bingo. Escalade and Navigator EV. It'll be like dueling banjos in the cul-de-sac with no noise. I don't care about Maserati, so just make the SUV that they make electric. Make it financially prohibitive to own without a trust fund at home and a hedge fund at work. Garbage stats. 50 kilowatt charging. 0 to 60 and very slow. Perfect. As much as the MX-30 was a hit at Mazda, I don't want to step on any toes. But I would say, put that motor from the MX-30 in the MX-5. Bring back the Miata name, call it the Miata EV, and make it slower than the MX-5. Also, put some horrible-looking aero wheel caps on it to keep it from selling too many. Super small battery, too, like 95 miles of range on 17 kilowatt hours. And charge $35,000, $36,000. If you don't give it no range and ugly caps and a really small motor with no 0-60, to 60, it'll be the best-selling car on Earth. A convertible EV? You don't think all of us don't want one of those? I'd say the SL Roadster for Mercedes. Don't change a thing, just shove some motors in there. Make the specs somewhere near the existing SL and charge $250,000. Good to go. Mini already knows the deal and they're right on brand with their EV. Absolutely terrible range at an inexcusable price. Carry on, Mini. Carry on. For Mitsubishi, anything less than an Evo 11 would be disappointing. But you can use all the stuff you used for the Evo 10 to cut costs. Make it like the 3000 GT. Not fast, super capable, but without the electronic failures. 275 horse, 350 pound-feet of torque, dual motor, independent off-throttle torque vectoring, drift mode, adjustable rally suspension, and all the other stuff that people who want to crash stylishly need. Oh, and make just one of the battery modules swappable so you can rally long distance. You can put the rest of the pack on standby mode at a state of charge somewhere in the teens and direct all the regen to the main pack until you're somewhere around 50% state of charge. Call it race mode. Make it $75,000 and they would have to stop supporting it after about a year. It's Mitsubishi. The enthusiast in me wants the Z to be electric, but Nissan wouldn't do that. So it's gotta be the kicks. How much was that Chevy Trax Sport Pack? $27,995? Okay, make the kicks 
27,990. It's just a Leaf S. 150 miles, 40 kilowatt hour pack, front wheel drive. But obviously switch to the CCS plug. I have no notes for Porsche. They already make a really expensive EV that charges really fast and goes fast, and you can spec it anywhere from eighty to two hundred and eighty thousand dollars. Carry on. Ram fifteen hundred, right? You got to make the Ram truck an EV. No, I say Ram. Promaster City. Put the batteries right on top of the current floor so you don't have to redesign it. Put like 80 kilowatt hours in there. Give it 200 to 250 miles of range. Stripped down, panel van version. No windows, no seats, no rear glass. Upgrade the suspension a little bit because you have to and charge $45,000 and watch it sell out. How does Subaru make an electric vehicle that doesn't cannibalize their entire lineup? I guess just make a rally version of the WRX. Call it the WRX. RX RAL E. There you go. Give it two pitiful motors and 200 and some horsepower. Make it $59,000. Don't think it'll sell? Include a vape pen charger. Here's a fun one. What if the Toyota Camry was electric? You'd have to do something debilitating to it to keep it from putting every other car business out of business. I know. No fast charging. No Chatamo. No CCS. No Tesla plug. Just 40 kilowatt hours. Front wheel drive. 150 miles of range, and a J1772 with a 10 kilowatt max. Charge $40,000. It would still be every New York taxi in a week. And Toyota would permanently be the best-selling automaker on Earth. I don't know if they want that anymore, but that's how they could do it. Volkswagen should just kill the gas Jetta and make an EV version of it. Use the exact same platform and architecture. You can give it CCS with 50 kilowatts but give it about 150 miles of range and a 40 kilowatt hour battery and charge $37,000. People would still probably pick a Camry EV over a Jetta EV, but a Jetta EV would keep the Volkswagen group alive. Volvo is in good shape overall here. They've got most of the bases covered, but how about the V90 cross country? Go full European, call it the V90 estate with two capital E's. Charge $70,000 and just use the hardware from the Polestars. I'd reserve one. Okay, if you made it to the end, I left out Ferrari, Bugatti, Lamborghini, Bentley, Rolls-Royce, Aston Martin, McLaren, and others. Let me know what brands I forgot down in the comments, and let me know which of their models you would make electric. The new EU legislation doesn't make any of these under 10,000 unit automakers adapt to the gas car ban. So that's so deep into speculation, I didn't even want to dig there. Leave your thoughts about all my ridiculous conjecture down below. And let me know which one of these fantasies was your favorite. If you have any stories to share, or if you drive an EV right now, and you'd like to let me review it, please let me know at adamsevreviews at yahoo.com. I just need your make and model and your general location. I promise I'll respond back. Subscribe for more. We'll see you on the next one. Hey, smash the like button. Thank you.